Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Drew. This is Just a Guy Linux. And as most of you know, I am a BSPWM nut. I have been with BSPWM for, I don't even know what I used before BSPWM. Let's put it that way. Okay, so I have been working on my i3 configuration for several hours the last, over the last couple days. And I've wanted to share it with you because I think I'm going to give this a shot for a little while as far as my production machine is concerned, which is what you see right here. This is my production machine. So let me talk about you guys for a second because I hit the 4,000 subscriber mark uh, three weeks ago and have been going up over the last 30 days. And thank you. I don't know what else to say. It's one of those things where I would I make videos simply for fun. I don't make a dollar off this channel, and that's the way I like it. <laughs> that's just the way I like it because that way I don't. If I'm not having fun, then I don't do it. So, um, quick comment about this video, which is the one that I did for Hyperland and Debian t uh, testing, because a few of you have asked about maybe a second video on this. I will try. I will try because I really am very, very, I like it. Let's put it this way. I like it and I like it a lot. In fact, I had a quick like go back and forth with Matt from the Linux cast and he asked, hey, are you going to keep it for a while? And I didn't know the answer. The fact of the matter is I would have put it on my production machine, but with Debian testing, and I know this is weird, it did not work with my peripherals. So my scanner and my printer that I actually, I don't, I don't need the printer so much, but I definitely need the scanner. So I needed that and it didn't work. So I just decided, you know what, I'm not gonna do it. Anyway, I like using Hyperland. I will probably do it in the future. And I might have another video uh, about using the, or changing the configuration to make it work for you. So there is a group of you that are not window manager enthusiasts and that's cool. I mean, you've said as much in the comments, it's like I never use a window manager and that's fine. Um, you probably already moved on from this video. Frankly, I am a big window manager enthusiast and for those of you that are as well, uh, we're gonna continue to look at them on this channel. While I am thinking about it though, this is kind of cool. See, I am on this, this screen over here, see my cursor. The active window has border, but it also has, it's basically opaque. And if you look to the left where YouTube is, um, you'll see that it is, there has some transparent properties. And that's kind of interesting because when I switch the active, notice that the transparent properties also switch. So you have, you know immediately, besides the border, you know, you know immediately which is the active window and which is inactive. And that's kind of interesting because that's not something that BSPWM has, at least not that I know of. I know that there's some, there's some, has been some issues in the past with that, and that's cool. But um, I'm not using a, um, I'm not using a fork of PyCom. This is the one that comes directly out of the uh, Debian packages. So I just installed PyCom right out of uh, Debian stable, and this is what you're getting. Okay, so also let's take a look at this. Um, as far as BSPWM, you'll see that as the cycle hasn't really changed that much over Bullseye. In fact, it hasn't changed at all over Bullseye, Bookworm, and Trixie, and that's fine. I don't really have a problem in using software that is stable um, and and is on the older side. But some of you I know are interested in um, a more robust, even though this is, I would, I would call i3 a, a robust development um, cycle. You are definitely getting newer software the more you go up. So between Bullseye, Bookworm, and Trixie, three completely different um, versions of i3. And if I go over here, I'll notice that the last version, which is this, the one that uh, Trixie is using, uh, only came out four months ago. And that's actually pretty good. So we're getting the latest and greatest basically um, for right now in Debian testing. So what you're looking at on the left-hand side is my i3 configuration that I've worked on a little bit. So 
Um, it may not look like it, but there was some things I didn't know how to do until fairly recently. So we're incorporating two include files. So workspaces and rules.conf, okay? Workspaces is simple. All it's doing is it's defining the workspace and the corresponding number, okay? That's it. Rules, on the other hand, demonstrates uh, what the size of the gaps are, border size, what the colors are for those borders, um, certain things I want to float, which include um, MPV and LX Appearance and Kitty and Calculator and so on. And I want it this size and in the center of the screen. So if I hit uh, Super Shift Enter, which is my Kitty, okay, it's going to pop it up in the center of the screen. And that's, that's all I want it to do. By the way, I am not a... Um, I'm not someone that does a lot with um, scratch pads. And so I3 and scratch pads, a lot easier than in BSPWM, all right? So to me, it's kind of irrelevant, but like if you're Matt, for example, scratch pads are a big part of his workflow. And that is something that you might wanna consider as well. So also in these rules, um, I want to assign my GitHub desktop to Workspace 2. Now, this is the only one example I have of that. Because I, what I want to do is I want to show you over here in BSPWMRC file, okay, I want certain things to open on dedicated workspaces. For example, I want GIMP to open on Workspace 8. I want OBS to work uh, to open and follow on Workspace 10. It is not straightforward to do that on um, on i3 to follow with with following as well. But there is a way to do that with the XXHKD. So I wanted all my key bindings in one location, which also kind of like allowed me to use a, not even have a rule for it. So I say, super E, I want it to go to workspace four and then open Genie. Same thing with GIMP. So I want super G, go to workspace eight and then open GIMP. Actually, it's already there. So let me go ahead and close that and let's do it again. So if, I, if I'm on workspace four like this and I go super G, it's gonna switch workspaces and then open up GIMP, okay? Pretty cool. Um, now, with regard to uh, NVIM, I have, I've never used NVIM like as my main uh, text editor with regard to uh, terminal-based text editor. That's what I wanted to say. But I've been really working on this. I want to show you. I'm not going to demonstrate it because I didn't think I don't think that I'm qualified to do so. But if I click on uh, Super V, I really like what I am trying, <laughs> let's put it that way. I am trying to use um, NeoVim more because I recognize how, how freaking awesome it is for the most part. Um, I don't know what else I really need to describe other than the fact that I did change this. Most people just want to shift the workspace but I want to actually follow to that workspace. So I had to set up 10 different shortcuts so that if I'm here, okay, so if I'm here, this is really bright, right? So if I'm on this particular part of the browser and if I hit super shift two, it's going to send that and focus it on workspace two, which is why I set up um, a dedicated shortcut for each uh, individual workspace. So I say, I want to move it and then follow it. And that's how you can accomplish that using XXHKD in i3. So I don't know if that made 100% sense, but for me, I, I instead of using two uh, key bindings, so I would say super shift two and then say super two to move, um, I'm automatically just 
moving it and then following it to the new to the new workspace. So that is why these have changed. So just for completeness, the only other um, the only other configuration file I'll include is this auto start.sh um, because it calls from it uh, in the config file and then it all it's doing is what you see here. It's starting PyCom, starting Dunst, starting SXH KD, and starting the polybar and the wallpaper. So this is not <laughs> this is not sexy at all, but just so you know that this is way uh, this is the way you start those things uh, in i3. Now, I think that's really all I wanted to demonstrate. I, I just you know if, as far as going to a new workspace and just you know opening up a bunch of terminals that's that's easy to show um, switching between one workspace and another, um, changing the size of something. All of this is really easy to, to demonstrate. And these are things that all of them should do. I'll tell you what, the one thing I wish i3 did that BSPWM has is I can like hold the, sh the super key down and use the right mouse click and then drag to where I exactly I want to resize that window. That is not something you can do in i3, but that's the only thing I've found. So, because like I said, you can easily change the size. It's not, it's not as smooth as using the, the, the mouse and the super key to, to drag, but you know, I'm not that worried about it. I'm not that worried about it. So anyway, what you see is, a, my changed uh, i3 setup. And like I said, I'm going to be using it for a little while. And I hope this helps. If it does, uh, please appreciate by leaving a comment and a thumbs up. And uh, talk to you next time.